as working artists, the idea of having someone help you with the business side of things sounds like a total dream. And that's where our agents come in. Agents can help you with things like negotiating, booking jobs, pricing, and even contracts. Now, both Katie and I have worked with and without representation, so we're gonna break it all down for you in today's video so that by the end, you have a good idea if you think representation is right for you. Hi, I'm Olana, and this is my business partner, Katie, and we are two self-employed artists on a mission to help you and other artists make more money doing what they love. Two things I wanna mention before we dive into this video. The first one is that there are many types of representation for artists, but in today's video, we are gonna talk about two of them. One is an illustration agent and the other is a licensing agent. Okay, so an illustration agent is gonna help you with freelance work. That could be book covers, editorial work, package design, and really any freelance project. A licensing agent, on the other hand, is gonna help you with art licensing. And if you're wondering, WTF is art licensing, go ahead and check out our video in Introduction to Art Licensing, where we break it down for you and then come back and watch this one so you totally understand what we're saying. We are gonna link that down below so you can access that real easily. The second most important thing, now listen up. An agent does not define your success. There are so many amazing artists with and without representation. So the point of this video is to help you understand if it might be a good fit for you or if you prefer to stay an independent artist. Now, first I wanna give you a little history of my experience working with agents. I am currently represented by both an illustration agent and a licensing agent. No, they don't compete with each other because I'm working on totally separate projects with both of them. One of the most important things I've found in my journey to find the right agents and to grow with an agent is to make sure that you really jive with them. Make sure you share values with them and have a workflow that will really support one another. You also wanna make sure that the clients that they're working with are the clients you wanna be working with. Now we're gonna do rapid fire where I answer your questions about agents but a lot of my answers are probably gonna be a lot longer than rapid fire because I just have so much to say on the subject. Okay, let's do this, rapid fire. I don't know, is that a fire? Okay, what do agents do for you? Agents can help you book and sign jobs. They can take a lot of responsibility off of your plate, allowing you to focus on the creative work. They can help with contracts and pricing. And one of the best things about agents is they have a network. They've been in this industry for a long time and have built up an email list of people who are looking for artists like you. In some cases, an agent is more like a project manager where they'll help you with negotiations and contracts. But once the project actually starts, where the design work actually happens, you hit the ground running. Now with licensing, it's a little different because their job is to book and manage any licenses. Licenses get a little complicated because they're not a one-time fee. They can be royalties. So it just gets a little more in depth. Again, taking that off your plate can really free up a lot of your time and a lot of your headspace. The next question is how do you find an agent? So there's no magic solution here. It's really just doing a Google search for our agents. It's keeping a list of any that you find so that you can make sure you find the right one for you and looking at who your peers are represented by. I'm not saying you wanna work with the exact same agent, but you just wanna to start to get a feel for who is out there representing artists. When I was looking for an agent, I kept a spreadsheet of all the agents I was finding and took a couple months to do my research to make sure I had all of the options laid out so I could make an educated decision about who I wanted to pitch my work to. Another great place to look is LinkedIn, like type in art agent or artist representation and things like that. Okay, now I just mentioned pitching my artwork. A lot of these agencies will have a submission guideline of how to send your work to them. And if they don't, you could put together a nice pitch deck about you and your work and show them what you're capable of. It's not rocket science, it's just putting your best foot forward and seeing if you're a good fit. I wanna remind you though, not to wait until you feel like your work is perfect, but to just feel proud of the work that you're presenting. An art agency should look and see your potential, not just that you already have a perfect portfolio. I mean, is that even a thing? A lot of these agencies get tons and tons of submissions, so make sure you're really following the submission guidelines so that they don't miss yours or receive it in the wrong way because then they're not gonna take the time to look through it. Okay, this is another question I get all the time. How much money do you make with an art agent? Art agents usually take 30 to 50% of your income. Like, oh my God. That hurts just thinking about it. 30 to 50% is a lot, but 
it frees up a ton of your headspace and a ton of your time. Depending on the agent, they are hopefully bringing you work that you wouldn't have gotten on your own. Again, they can negotiate for you so you get the appropriate payment as well. That's for me the most important thing I've gotten out of my experience working with an agent is the time to focus on creating and free up my headspace so that I can do projects I'm really passionate about. Now, depending on your output and your agent, I would say artists can make about $10,000 to well over $100,000 working with an agent. What's the commitment like? With an illustration agent, your commitment is gonna be whatever projects you book. And that could be a range of one per month to you know a couple per month. That comes down to both your output and your agency. If your agency has a ton of artists, they might be working on a ton of projects all at once, maybe one per artist, or maybe you have some slow months. There really is still gonna be a lot of ebbs and flows. Some licensing agents will require a certain amount of new artwork created each month. Because licensing works so differently where you're pulling from a catalog of already created work, you really wanna produce more work. I'm not saying that quantity is better than quality, but in the licensing world, the more available artwork you have, the more opportunities you have to work with buyers. So if you're working with a licensing agent who does require a certain amount of pieces per month, you wanna make sure that's within your bandwidth. Just having a set number of pieces doesn't mean they're gonna sell. So you just wanna consider, okay, do I have the flexibility both financially and creatively to create that many pieces? Here's another good question. Should I get an agent? If you want one, yeah, sure, go ahead. I really liked the process of connecting with my clients, meeting them, doing outreach. That wasn't something that really scared me or frustrated me or felt like out of reach, but I am a working mom with two young kids and I really, really value working with someone who can help me not only pitch my work, but book me jobs, negotiate, and make things a lot simpler for me while I have little kids at home. Plus, when I started working with an agent, I was really new to licensing, so I was able to learn a lot from their experience in the industry. Okay, so what should you look for in an agent? This might sound cheesy, but I think the most important thing is to just make sure you believe in each other. Make sure you feel that they have your best interest in mind and that they really wanna see you succeed. And make sure you feel the same about them. The other options like the size of your agency and where they're located or anything like that really comes down to your personal preference. Having a licensing agent versus a illustration agent, again, comes down to what kind of art do you wanna be creating? I would also encourage you to make sure that their client list aligns with your dream client list. If you really value working with like eco-conscious brands or woman-owned companies, make sure that that's one of their values too. One thing I love about my agency is both of my agents are women, women-founded companies, and I love that about them. When I hopped on the call with my licensing agent, I asked them about their moral values, and I was happy to sign with them when I had that conversation. I would also take this opportunity when you're looking at agents to talk to other artists represented by those agents. I've had a couple phone calls with artists who are represented by the people either I am not working with or people I was interested in working with or currently working with. And that really gave me some insight into their experience with them. And usually I've found that artists are happy to share this information. The other thing I would say is review your contracts. Make sure you know what you're signing up for. Is it a one-year commitment, a five-year commitment? Are you able to still work on projects outside of that commitment? What are the expectations per month? And really how are you gonna work together? Okay, I love this question. Does it provide consistent, reliable income? I don't think anything about freelancing is predictable. Of course, you're gonna have ebbs and flows, but nothing is a guarantee. I'm sharing this information to help you so that you can make an educated decision, but you can definitely make a successful career working with an agent or without, but it's just not a one size fits all answer. With licensing, you don't know how well products are gonna sell. You don't know if a pandemic will come and wipe out all of in-store purchases. And with editorial jobs or illustration jobs, you just don't know how many per month you'll book. But I think that's a conversation to have with the agent before you sign. How many jobs should I expect a month? Or what are our goals? Can we set some goals? How can we strive to hit those goals. For licensing, it is a long and slow game. Because you might be paid on royalties, which is a percentage of sales, you really need to keep adding those royalties on top of each other and layering them like an onion so that it grows and grows and grows. As I mentioned before, the more artwork you can create in the licensing world, the more opportunities for buyers. So you really wanna work with your agent to make sure you're making the right kind of work that they feel will be successful. Now with illustration agents, 
every agent is different, but I sort of think of them as project managers, as I mentioned. So I yes, they're going to be pitching your work, but they're a lot of their time is going to be spent on managing, negotiating, helping you with contracts. So you still want to make sure you are marketing yourself and trying to get in front of these dream cla- closets. What? Trying to get in front of these dream clients so that then your art agent can help you manage the job. That's one of the reasons I think it's so important to show up on social media so that clients start to find you and then your agent can help you manage it. Speaking of social media, does having a social media presence impact your ability to get an agent? (laughs) Negative. (laughs) Having a social media is essential to being an artist right now. There, it is a visual platform. So showing your artwork is getting it in front of more people than would have found it locally. But it's just not the only way. So I think you should have a social media presence, but it does not matter how large your presence is. Of course, brands can look at you and see that they might have better success selling a product if your name is on it. So sure, a large following is great, but it definitely isn't gonna make or break your opportunities with brands or with agents. So I think with this one, you really need to figure out like in your gut, what feels right for you. Okay, next question. What should my portfolio look like before I reach out to an agent? For art licensing, there's no magic number. You'll have to check the submission guidelines on the agent's website, but I would say you should have 10 to 15 pieces that are really, really strong. Now, these might be collections, small collections, maybe three to four pieces, or one-off pieces depending on the style of your work. Licensing portfolios, as I mentioned, are totally different than freelance portfolios. And again, we've talked about the quantity is really important because it's more opportunities, but I think what agents are looking for is they can see your potential and your range. They wanna look at your portfolio and say, oh, I could totally see this on X, Y, and Z. If you feel like you have no idea where to start with building a portfolio, we have an art licensing portfolio builder, which is a hundred prompts to help you build that licensing portfolio, and we will link it down below. For illustration agents, it is more about the quality and the potential of your work. So I would say have five to 10 pieces that really represent your niche and your style, and your voice really shines through. And remember that your portfolio is only as strong as your worst piece in it. So take out all the stuff you're not that excited about and only keep in the things you're really proud of. Okay, do you want to get an agent that represents similar people to you or one that is totally different? So this sort of comes down to personal preference. When I looked for agencies, I wanted to be one of the only letterers that was represented, but I wanted to know that they were booking jobs that required lettering. Again, you could be a small fish in a big pond where there are tons of lettering artists and you all work on similar projects, but I wanted an opportunity to collaborate with the other artists that were represented, and I really wanted a small agency with few artists. Whew, okay, that was a lot of good questions. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with me on the subject, and comment below if you have any other questions that we haven't covered. We talk even more about agents in our course, The Art Licensing Blueprint, and I will send a link to that below as well. Hit that subscribe button so you can never miss a beat. We share videos about how to grow your art business every week. We're artists who mean business. We're in this with you.